Ready for some WordCamp story time. <laughs> Everybody hear me okay? Okay. Today we'll be reading One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish. I figure after lunch you guys need a good bedtime story to get some rest. <laughs> Who here likes Dr. Seuss? Everybody loves Dr. Seuss. Okay. Sit down, kids. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. If I stand up here. Flat fish, blue fish, old fish, new fish. This one has a little star. This one has a little car. Say what a lot of fish there are. Yes, some are red and some are blue. Some are old or some are some are old and some are new. Some are sad and some are glad. And some are very, very bad. Why are they sad and glad and bad? I do not know. Go ask your dad. Some are thin and some are fat. The fat one has a yellow hat. From there to here. I missed my slides. I'm just reading. From there to here, from here to there, funny things are everywhere. Say what a lot of fish there are. Just think about it. Think for a second to yourself how many kinds of people are out there using the web? How many people are using your website? Are out there looking at it? How many eyes are on it? A site that you manage for your business or you created a designer or a developer? Look around this room here. We're all different types of people here. Look around your community around the world, all these people are coming to on the web in this age to look at these websites and this information. Different ages of people, different ethnicities, all different types of people, different backgrounds they all have, different sizes, they have different feelings on how they, how they see things, how they process things, yeah. different buying preferences, and different modes of communication. Now these are the fish that you're building your website for. I mean, people. You need to plan your approach to your website to think about these people. Now, of course, you can get in the web pretty easy nowadays. You can grab a WordPress theme. You can put it up on any number of hosts out there. They have one-click installers. They have managed WordPress hosting now. You can get on the web as easy as any time ever now. Get your business up there. Get your idea up there. Get anything up on the web. There's page builders. There's things like Wix and Squarespace that let you drag and drop stuff all around. You can hire somebody for a fully custom-designed website. You can pay anything from you know, a couple hundred bucks to thousands and thousands of dollars. And all these things are going to make something beautiful for you. Each and every one of these is going to do something beautiful. You can make a beautiful site from using a template, a theme that's out there. You can make a beautiful site by paying tens of thousands of dollars to an agency. But can you ensure that they're effective for your goals and the goals of your user? Now, the good news is that there are people out there that are looking for your website. They're looking for your product. You can see them all coming right here, trying to find you. They're all different. They're all the same in some ways. Some have two feet, some have four. Some have six feet, some have more. They all have come a long, long way looking for you, so don't waste it. Do not waste that opportunity, because these people are coming out here to find you. You have to make sure they can easily find the information they need for their decision making, the stuff that they're coming to your website for. They're out there looking for you for a reason. Don't get in their way. Make sure they can find it. So you're asking what kind of problem people may have with your website. Well, you know these people are looking for your product. You know you have a nice looking website. What's the problem? What's wrong? Well, look at Ned here. Look at Ned. He's using a bed. By all means, it's a nice bed. It's a beautiful bed. I'm sure 
they worked with their bed designer, and this was just the bed that the client wanted. Yeah, I want that beautiful bed. It looks amazing. I saw this bed in the showroom there. I want one just like that. It looks so great. But they didn't think of their user. They didn't think of Ned. Because Ned's trying to use the bed or the website, and his head sticks out up here, his feet stick out down there. It's nice. By the client's measures, they thought it was a nice bed, but by Ned's measures, it wasn't. You're taking your customers, you could be taking your customers, and jamming them into an experience that's not made for them. Also, it makes me think of this cartoon from XKCD. We've all seen this. It's been on many, many presentations. I've seen this at pretty much every WordCamp I've been to. I almost didn't want to use it because it's used so much, but it, it, it rings true still. What are you looking for on a website is either what you think people want or what they actually want. It shows the school website here and what actually overlaps for what people are actually looking for on the website and what you know maybe the designer or the, the management puts in the website and doesn't always align. You gotta plan for it and think about it. We've all been to these kind of sites. It's in, in presentations today, I saw a few people talking about this where they can't find the information they want on the website because it's not designed or, or architected or thought out well enough to, to get that information across. We've all been there. So, HubSpot did a little survey that I found online here. It said 76% 76, 76 of people said the most important factor in the design of their website is that it makes it easy for me to find what I want. Now, that's not surprising at all. We all know that. It's common sense. That's why people are at your website. But a lot of times we seem to ignore it because we have these other things we're thinking about. If you look at beautiful appearance, cutting edge interactive experience, that only amounts for 19% in this survey they did here. Combined, you need to concentrate first on making it easy for your users to find the information they want. Because I know if you're a business owner, if you're a designer, if you're a developer, if you're like me, you do have your ulterior motives. You all do. You want to show off all that cool shit you do. Can I say that here? Oh my God. Because you want to, you, you know you can make these JavaScript animations that look awesome on the page. You know you can put all these flashy videos up there. Sliding images, it looks cool. We all know that. But is it effective? Sometimes, sometimes not. You do want, yeah, I know we've all done it. We all want to feel, feed our ego a bit with this. And don't get me wrong, they can be helpful at times when used right, but don't do it at the expense of your user. Make sure they can find out the information they want. Make their decisions. Your website should be like Mike here. Mike sits up and back, not impeding the user's progress when he doesn't need him to. And to quote Dr. Seuss here, we like our Mike, and this is why. Mike does all the work when the hills get high. Because Mike does the work when you need him to. Mike gives the user direction. Mike gives these kids direction, pushes them uphill, gives them that little push when they need to get to the right information, and leads them in, their, in the right direction. That's what your website needs to do, and you need to do when you're trying to, to work in your marketing plan, in your website plan, online. Give them that little push when they need it. Get out of their way when they don't. Sit them back. Now, I came up with the presentation after reading bedtime stories with my daughter. She's four and a half years old now, going on five in April, so a little over four and a half. And after reading these books over and over and over, you know kids, day after day, because they want the same ones again and again. You know that, and it's not always just day after day. Sometimes you finish reading that book, and they're like, Daddy, I want to read it again. Yeah, and you get kind of sick of being that moon. And, and that, that little old lady whispering hush, kind of, yeah, and, and don't get me started on the bowl full of mush. 
So, but kids, they have complex minds like ours, but they tend to approach things a little more simply. When they want to have fun, they make a paint and they make a painting, you know, want to be a little artistic. You give them the paint set, they have five colors to work with. What do they do? They draw a stick figure, they write daddy up on top there, and it's perfect. Daddy loves it. I know I love it, my dad, daughter does that. I'm sure you guys out there have kids love it too. That's the perfect thing for daddy because they know what it means. Now, us as adults, we're a little different. We go to wine art classes and learn how to paint and mostly just drink wine. <laughs> um, try to make things all complex, a little too more complex. And then kids, and but, you know, then when you get home, you don't love it because you, you overanalyze it, thinking about it too much. But kids have a simple stick figure in, and it's perfect for the user, it's perfect for daddy because they love it, even though it has eye over here and eye over there, your tor torso is as big as the house next to it. It's perfect for daddy because it's exactly what he wants. So. And the kids, they're forward about what they want you to do. So you're sitting home, maybe sitting on the couch, watch, couch watching TV, wondering where your kid is. Okay, went to the bathroom or something. Next thing you hear, Daddy, come wipe my butt. Yeah, I've heard that. So they let you know exactly what it is. You know, they don't sugarcoat it at all. They'll let you know what they want you to do and what needs to be done. Um, so, when you're building a website, think about this. Think about your client. Maybe think like a child. Because you have to break it down and think simply about your users and how to get their message across. Couple tips, and this has been reiterated, I saw some great presentations earlier today. Do your user research. Find out who your user is. Find the different types of fish that visit your business, that come to your website. Find the ones that are your customers. Find out what makes them unique. Find out what things they have in common. How to best approach them. Do they have a little car or do they have a little star? Talk to your current customers. Good way to do it. Best way because they already know what's going on. They're already experiencing your business. What need, and they already have their pain points with it. Um, they've probably been on your website before, if you have a current website, and know what you, what you could fix with it, what kind of stuff they were looking for. Talk to the people in your business who interact with your customers mo most. Who answers the phone? They get tons of questions each day, I'm sure. What kind of questions can you answer on your website that'll save them time too? Because people are going to your website to find it. What they, like I said, what they get most phone calls about? What type of things do people want from your business from your website? It also cut down on time that people spend on the phone. Create some personas about your customers so you know who they are. Types of things that you know, you know. Like I said, their ages, their ethnicities, their types of people that, that come into your business, what type of things they like. Create these personas so you know what kind of people are going to be, you're going to be working with there. Do some A-B testing. There was a great presentation just before this about A-B testing so you know what's actually working for these customers. Plan for all the types of users, all types of users. Don't ignore accessibility issues as well. Earlier today, if you went to the presentation, we had a... <coughs> Great talk by um, one of the speakers here who's blind. A whole different perspective that brings to us about how blind people can approach and other people with accessibility uh, problems that approach your website. Think about them as well.
because you don't want to be giving the wrong types of information or information doesn't work to your customers, to your users. It's going to drive them away. It's not going to be of any use to them. They're not going to find what they need. Because you, because you know, you're not going to give a cookbook to a nook. Because everybody knows that a nook can't read, so a nook can't cook. So a good to a nook is a cook cookbook. Listen to Dr. Seuss. Another tip is to ask your user to take action. They want to find something or you want to lead them in direction. They're, they're there because they're interested about you, interested about your product. Push them in that direction to try to get your product, to try to make that sale. <coughs> Just like I said, my daughter, she's going to let me know what she wants. She's going to tell me, Daddy, come wipe my butt. But I want to recommend wiping your customer's butt. This, this, you know. But put clear and concise calls to action on your pages. Now, if there's a product your customer wants to buy <clears throat> or something they want to sign up for, lead them to it. Make it easy. Make it simple for them. <clears throat> Use a sense of urgency to relay the benefits, not the features. Benefits resonate with people much more than features. If you're looking at selling a cell phone or a computer, talking about what kind of processors in there and all these technical specs aren't going to sell the phone as much as showing like Apple does in their commercials, that you can share family moments. Bring that type of message out in your calls to action so you can get people to actually act. Use recognizable visual cues. There's some great presentations today earlier I saw too about using, um, while well, A-B testing was good there, or using good buttons, using things that point in the right direction. Make sure people know exactly where they're going. I just put this up here today, right before this, because I started checking Facebook by phone. Facebook here is using, asking me what to do here, because they want people to start sharing their locations, sharing where they are, sharing this data. So they asked me, are you at WCTC, because they have my location data. Take that, and they're tracking all of us, but take that, uh, take what information you have and find out about your customers so you can target to them, bring it right to them. Also, use interesting text and not generic words all the time. Try to find out things that work for your customers. I found this online, look at it here. When somebody, when they changed submit to support Haiti, it increased the conversions by 16%. And when you used find your gym and get membership, it gave a 213% boost. In this uh, study here on you know, entrepreneur.com, entrepreneur magazine. Use something that's gonna resonate with your with your customers, with your users, to get them in the direction they need to go. Here's some examples I found too of some uh, calls to action that I really liked. <coughs> so, Evernote up on top, I really like the tagline, great tagline they use there, something you can relate to. Remember everything. That's what Evernote wants you, wants you to do with this because they want you to store all your information there so you can remember it. It shows the guy sitting at his desk all the information coming at him, and all this stuff is what he's putting into Evernote to remember. Great imagery putting with it. Imagery speaks to people a lot. Use that in your calls to action. Take advantage of that. Uh, the one on the right, I like their button text. It says, let's start a new project together. It's nice and casual, making it think that you're working together as a team, not a hard sell there. As a team, we're working together and let's start this project, let's get going on it. And at the bottom left there for Square, I think somebody else today pointed out how good Square did it. Start selling today, that's their tagline in there. It gives you that sense of urgency using today. It lets you know exactly what they're about. Square, you know, you put it on your phone, your iPad, swipe the card, bring it with you anywhere. It's easy to set up. You get a square reader, sign up for the app, you're selling today. That's what they want you to know. They use great imagery on there as well, showing latest small business, just they're easily making a sale. Next one is to simplify. Give the customers what they want and make it simple, easy for them to get. If your customers like to drink pink ink, 
make it simple for them to get the pink ink like this ink. Focus on showing them how to do that. Sometimes that stick figure is the best. Like I said, a simple drawing, a stick figure my daughter gave me, it's the best. I still recommend drinking wine though. Make sure there's no barriers for your users to, get their, to make their decisions, to buy the product from you, to get the information from you. Otherwise, they're not going to have a good experience. They're most likely going to go away. They're going to find somebody else who can do it too. Make it as easy as possible for them. Unlike this. This is a graphic I found online about paying your parking ticket. Something you don't, that's not parking ticket, parking passes in a parking garage. Something you don't like doing anyway. I don't understand what you're doing. There are steps everywhere. At least they're <laughs> labeling the steps, but one step's up here, one step's down there, and you can't even follow anything there. Use easy navigation and point people in the right direction to simplify it as easy as possible so you don't have these barriers up in front of your, your customers. Think about the architecture on your website, like how it's going to flow the best for your users so they can get through the website and get through the process of finding that information. I mean, look at an example of uh, some of the giants out there who, which of these companies dominate search? I mean, Yahoo is basically going out of business and Google's everywhere. But it's because over time, Google hasn't really changed much. They have a simple search box, guides you right where you want to go. They serve the ads up elsewhere and that, and they make their money that way. But Yahoo's always tried to jam so much stuff into their, their homepage. And that's, I believe at least, one of the reasons why Google started being so successful. They tried to simplify things more than trying to make their homepage be everything at once. And just all that stuff there obfuscates, obfuscates the core user need. So remember, no matter if you buy a theme, or if you use some page builder out there, you hire agencies and spend plenty of money on it, be sure to plan your website before you do anything. Think of the fish out there. Do your user research. Find out who they are. Ask the users to take action. Lead them to the information they need and simplify it. Get right to your user's goals. And today is gone. Today was fun. Tomorrow is another one. Every day from here to there, funny things are everywhere. Thank you.